and you may not feel the need to always intervene because you think you're um, a man too until it happens to your daughter most of you men don't want to become better people until it happens to your daughters hello everybody my name is florence Ifoma, or you can call me lady flora so um this particular video is going to be a story time for like the longest time um, many people around me or even when i meet acquaintances whenever the conversation that has to do with um church comes up i always try my possible best to avoid it or better still let it slide and um I feel like after 1922, I feel like after almost um, six years, I am more comfortable to talk about my experience, talk about the major reason why I stopped going to church. Like, um, I stopped going to church in 2018, and I only tried it once again in 2019, and that was it. So, um, I'm actually sharing this story time because I feel like they, there may be a lot of people like me that maybe because of one or two things that, um, happened to them, they may decide to, you know, take very, um, drastic decisions. I hopefully feel that this story time helps you and um brings you out of hurt the hurt or the darkness that makes you stay at one particular place or have um you know what let's just get into it so for the purpose of this video i'm going to call um a friend that i used to have we are still kind of friends anyways but i wouldn't really for the purpose of this video I'm going to call her Ego. So it was, I think, a Wednesday service. I wouldn't mention the name of the church either, but I was in school, 2018. If it's not 2017, it's definitely 2018. I'm struggling between the years, but I am certain that it's sometime in March 2018 because it has never really left me. The church that I attended as at that time, they had, you know, meet service, midweek service, which held on every Wednesdays. Mm. Oh. So every Wednesdays, there were um, midweek services where we attended and... Um, on that particular Sunday, I was with Ego. You know, we went to the service together. And um, on our way back home, we were actually, this is the gate of where I lived in school. And we were like fifth, um, 15 steps away from the gate. Like, see the gate, see us here. Then we saw a guy standing there. He wasn't, he was unarmed. If you would say he used jazz, it's very possible because this guy just started talking to us. Obviously, you give somebody audience this night, somebody's talking to you, you wouldn't just abruptly shut them and, you know, walk away. When your, your, your house is just here, they can just follow you inside. So whatever it is they want to say should be outside. He started asking random questions. How many people are in the compound? Do we have men living in the compound? As at that time, it was just a guy that lived in that compound but obviously as somebody that um you know has a functioning brain i was like oh no we have like four guys living in the compound four bachelors and two girls just me and my friend da, 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 da. so um don't ask i can't really remember how specifically that conversation went but all of a sudden you know he started showing us people that were part of his gang and we started following him you know there was threat to life there was threat on our lives so we followed him quietly 
we followed him to um sorry guys i apologize if i'm pausing in between because i'm actually shocked that um you know i actually thought i was ready to really like have this conversation but um it's still kind of difficult but i genuinely feel like in fact i've never had this conversation except for the person in the ego who witnessed it with me so um oh um we followed this man to like a uh deserted area it was like um a, a, a mechanic workshop you know there were cars condemned cars but it's night obviously they don't work at night and unfortunately for us you know most mechanic mechanic and places people always sleep there overnight some of these boys that do not have like places to live sleep there but unfortunately for us that was not one of those mechanic shops so bear it in mind i was it was that time of the month for me yeah it was that time of the month mr red jacket was around so um he searched our purses i just had my bible i think yeah and my smaller phone and then my girlfriend also had a smaller phone because most of those week services we didn't really go with our smartphones if she had a smartphone i wouldn't really remember everything happened within like a flash so he searched our bags and was asking a couple of questions one man one man he told us to lay down And I um, actually started begging him, you know, I started begging him, please don't do this. I'm on my messes. Don't hurt myself and my friend. Don't do it. Take our phones. Um, I had some money. I think it was more than 7,000 naira, my bag. But I think I withdrew that I want to use the money and do something the next day. I said two eighteen to seventeen. So I was like, "There's money in my bag. Please take the money and just I'll take the phones and allow us. Don't do this. Don't do this thing that you want to do." He did it. He R A P E D us at once. I do not want to graphically explain it, but remember it was uh that time of the month and it was more like transferring. So, um, personally, that's the first and the last experience I've had when it comes to RAP. So that's why most times when I post that for every 10 girl in Nigeria, it's has gone through it it's not a lie for every most of your sisters your girlfriends your moms have gone through it and you may not feel the need to always intervene because you think you're um, a man too until it happens to your daughter. Most of you men don't want to become better people until it happens to your daughters. Um so after that incident I obviously I'll question God. I was devoted like 
for present today, go meet with same service. <laughs> Guys, let me bring myself together. So, um, sorry about that. Well, I'm not sorry. So, for somebody to be devoted, um, you know, midweek service, Sunday service, I question God. Why? Why did you let this happen to me? Why? I was coming back from your house, from a place of worship. Why did you let this happen to me? Why? I I give you thanks. I, I am a kind person. I'm, I'm, I was a, an usher. There was a department I was offering services. Why did you let it happen to me? And there was no answer. There was no answer. So, um, first of all, I stopped loving men. That was the first thing. I would intentionally date men to hurt them. I was broken. For a couple of months, if not throughout that 2018, even the guy I was dating at that time felt the heat. He didn't know until today, except he sees this video by mistake. He didn't know what happened. I told the story, but this part was left out. My girlfriend and I didn't have the morale to see it. How people look at you. You know, there's a stigma that comes with it, but... Um, I detest men. I literally detested men. I, uh... I became a beast. <laughs> mm, mm, some of the people that dated me during that period, no. Like, I, I'm cold. I can be very cold-hearted. I became cold-hearted. You break up with people and, you know, their, their emotions. I had zero emotions. Zero sympathy. Most of my friends will probably think, oh, this one is just... Yeah, yeah normally, I can be mean. But I, I, I am a genuine person. But it became worse. It became worse. This story is the first time for everybody. I've not mentioned it to a family member. I've not mentioned it to um, anyone I was dating at the point in time. I do not mention it to friends to tell you that there could be more. But everybody has their story. Secondly, aside being very mean and brutal to men, I stopped going to church. That's the main reason. Anything that had to do with God, post. If you can let me go through this, I don't want you to be my God. And the fact that they will still say, do not question him. Everything happens for a reason. What was the freaking reason why this happened to me? What lesson were you trying to teach me? Was he trying to teach me? Was Couldn't he come in, in any other shape, way, or form? <sighs> it's crazy. It's crazy. So I stopped going to church. So when people ask me, why don't you go to church? I tell them, yeah, I'm a Christian, of which I am. Because over time, I have had to heal. I've had to heal myself. And when you don't talk about it, it's difficult to heal to really, really, really move past it. This is more like a major therapy for me. Because I want to be able to, maybe in years down the line, watch this video. I know that this was like one of the major breaking points for me to move on, to really open up myself. Recently, relationship wise, church wise, I want to be better. I've been a mean person. I really want to be better. So I have to move on from this. So, um, I stopped going to church. Not because I do not believe in God. I actually never stopped believing in God. I still pray, but not in gatherings. I, um... 
So moving forward, when you ask me questions about church, and I really don't have a direct answer, do not try to, you know, talk me into it. Don't try to act like a saint. There is a reason. Allow me to heal the way I choose to heal. I've actually come a long way. I'm actually surprised that I can still talk to God because I have literally lived six years or five years of my life blaming God for that particular incident. Other things happen anyways, but that particular incident, ah, nothing has caught me deep like that particular incident. Mind you, anything would have happened. My girlfriend and I had to like run tests, series of tests after that. I'm not mistaken here. Yeah, we had to in private. Anything would have happened. It could be an incurable STI. It could be pregnancy. Imagine, imagine having a bastard baby. If freaking. If I had a baby, do you know how much hate I had for that child? If I had an incurable disease, do you know how messed up my life would be? So, yeah, I'm still growing. I'm still becoming a better person. I I want um to become a better partner to people that I date moving forward. Because I was broken. Not that I don't love people that I date. I do, but I'm broken. At the back of my mind, I want to secretly hurt them. I want them to feel pain. That pain that I felt that night never left me. So I I do not want to be transferring aggression to people's son. Sons, people that genuinely care for me. I am tired of being miserable about people that genuinely love me. One minute I'm in love with them, the next minute is a mood swing and I don't want to talk to them because I feel like you all are the same. Mm. It can happen to anybody anyways. At least I was an adult. I know I wasn't a virgin. But when it's forced... It is first it is false you are going to be hurt you're going to have bruises your mental state will be effed up for a long time if not for the rest of your life if you do not talk about it you may stay in that state for the rest of your life <laughs> If you've gone through something similar, I urge you to speak up. You may not have the courage like I do to make a video of it. But talk to a family member you trust. I do not know who this particular guy is. And like, I do not know his name. But to tell you how hurt I was, if I see him today, six or five years later, I will recognize him. If he says a word, I will recognize him. I don't think my mom will not recognize that bastard. I will recognize him. I hope that I never encounter him. If I do, hopefully I'm as forgiving as I am now at that point in time. So yeah, um, if this video made you poor, you know, you felt mixed emotions, I apologize. There is really no way I would have talked about this without tears. You know, I usually watch people that do videos and, and cry and I'll say, oh, you set up the camera to cry. <laughs> Wait until you're telling um, something that... If you've been hurt this way, I apologize on behalf 
of the perpetrator. I pray that you heal. I pray that you heal from whatever it is that is hurting you. Um, I know it's worse when you know the perpetrator, you know. It is very painful when it's somebody around you that does it to you. But I pray that you girls heal. There are a lot of you, a lot of women in Nigeria, in Africa, in the world that can't talk. It happens every freaking day. I have brothers, and I don't know how I'll feel if I found out they did something like this to another woman. You are a guy. You're watching this, please. You may not even know me from anywhere, but these are the things that break women. Like I've been singing on this video, it can be anybody. If you've ever done it, I pray the karma that gets to you hits you so hard that you wonder where your life is heading to. I pray you get your judgment. That being said, thank you guys for um, coming to my story time. This was an emotional one. I do not think <laughs> there would ever be an emotional video like this, except it's tears of joy. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel, turn on post, post notifications, and uh, yeah, join the family. Have an amazing time.